initially about the let's make a deal concept of offering an income tax cut to those making under $100,000 in exchange for voting for tolls. Uh, I have no That's idea what you're talking heard about. That. I know. So we heard I have that. no. That was not in the presentation we saw. You didn't so. talk about any income tax, or um, you knew about the Easy Pass uh, discount, but nothing on the table in there that said we, it would. We didn't talk about yeah. any of numbers relative. It was suggestion out there. Well, would we change your mind if we gave a, a tax reduction? Not necessarily. It was just out there as a tax reduction. Um, but there was no numbers given, and no. I, the first I ever heard of a hundred thousand is whatever Maybe Mark said. There was twenty. There were twenty-three or twenty-one slides in that presentation. Number nineteen was a cut in income tax. We they didn't, didn't get show through you every single slide because you know time became an issue. Uh, and quite frankly, we were in there what almost two hours, and it wasn't. I think maybe to the last half hour that there was even. Uh, the subject was brought up. Well, would you support tolls if this? Would you support tolls if that? You know, the goal obviously was to support tolls uh, from their perspective, and they wanted to know what it is we would need to see to possibly get to that point. And they just mentioned a tax decrease, but not so any parameters. We got through slide 18, and I remember looking at slide 18 as the last slide. Okay, 19 was the one they Okay, we never got to slide 19. It ended. We've said that we, we didn't have any discussion of meetings next week or did not agree or disagree to any meetings next week. Nothing was scheduled. We it said was... we would continue conversations continue? on transportation. What's your basic message right now after hearing some know. of this? Is there any way you guys support tolls in any <laughs> form or fashion? No, we don't support tolls, period. But let me just say this. They just threw out a lot of numbers very quickly spoke very quickly, like the Federal Express guy, you know, very fast. And for us to catch on to what they said, they started asking, so where are you? Do you want tolls? Do you have a solution? It's like, well, can we digest the numbers just a little bit? Give us some time to take a look at, can we have the actual PowerPoint? But like you're saying on the slide 19, we got to 18. There was no mention of any figures whatsoever, no suggestion other than sort of off the cuff, can we change your mind? If you, What about if we will reduce taxes? Now, they did say that in a very broad sense. Now, I don't know if they're talking about gas tax, income tax. I don't know what taxes they were talking about. So I have no idea. Neither one of us have no idea no. what you're talking and about. And like I said, it, we were in there for almost two hours, and that conver that part of the conversation wasn't even broached until the last half hour, and it was almost like, let's make a deal. Well, if we, if we do this, would you support tolls? If you do that, would you support tolls? And, I mean, from our perspective... Besides the deluge of information, and a lot of it we knew, and a lot of it we didn't, so we want to take a look at it. But there was nothing in this meeting at any at any point that would change our position on not supporting tolls. How about the basic case the for line. the need? Um, do you concur with the numbers they put forward that that there there will be a gap that you, you need about 1.2 billion to maintain the roads in a state of good repair, and that there's going to be a shortfall of about 400 million in the not too distant future? So you need a big deep dive, Mark. And what I mean by that is, yes, they put those numbers. They're DOT. Who am I to challenge? DOT engineers. Over what period of time are we talking to 1.2 billion? Over what period of time are we talking to 1.4, 1.9 billion? They put a lot of numbers out there, including railroad. Once again, you can't do infrastructure in the state of Connecticut like you're in California. The state of Connecticut is divided between east, west, north, south, with Hartford and New Haven being the central points. So you got to, where are you talking about these projects? How long are they going to be? When are they going to come online? It's like the wish list of DOT. So Representative Claris and I made it very clear. Let's look at your slides. We've got to get our hands around it, and we will. Our people are very competent, both our staffs. We're going to look at these numbers. We're going to ask questions, and then we'll figure out, you know, this is about not, this is not an issue about tolls. It's an issue about transportation. They want to drive it to tolls, but... Representative Clarence and I are saying it's about transportation. That's the answer. And they asked, they asked us when we left, right. would you, are you open to continuing converse, conversations? And we both said, we are certainly open to continuing conversations on transportation, but based on your plans, they do not include tolls. So if it's no tolls, no how, no way, why, why are we even in the room? I mean, isn't this about well, you know, negotiating? The governor invited us into a meeting, only? and we're always willing to listen. Let's be clear. We were in that room because the governor couldn't get his toll vote through, period. 
They didn't ask us to have a meeting on the budget. They didn't ask us to have a meeting on paid family leave. They didn't ask us to have a meeting on minimum wage. And they didn't ask us to have a meeting on their single payer system. We're in that room because you didn't have the votes. You would all know you're in this building up to the last day of session. The rumors flew that they're going to put it up on a board on Monday, then Tuesday, then Tuesday in the House. Representative Claris knew those votes. He knew that wasn't going to go forward. So let's be clear. We were in that room because they don't have the votes. He had a pair of deuces. He showed that he had deuces, and that's where we are. We're in that room because he needs our help to get tolls over the finish line because he knows that most of the legislators in this building know that the tolls are not the answer because government can't be trusted, that they're not going to continually take that money and use it for other things. I don't mean toll money, but the other SDF money. Just like we saw the original budget proposal change in the new car tax. That's the problem. And, and you look at what we just came off of, of a week and a half ago, we voted on a budget. In that budget that we did not support, were we ever in that room having that conversation? We were in that room one time the day before the budget just to give the briefing, the brief briefing that our, that our staff gets uh, the day before the budget's going to be done. I mean, this isn't about hurt feelings. This isn't about resentment. This is about the reality that two years ago we did a bipartisan budget in this state. And was it perfect? No, because there's no such document that exists. But we believe, Senator Fasano and I, and I think the Speaker and the Majority Leader and the Senate President would all agree that that was the best, one of the best budgets we've put together because everybody sat down and everybody had parts of it that moved it forward. Now, we also all know that the only reason that happened is because the tie in the Senate and the four vote difference in the House. But that was the best for the state of Connecticut. Now, this year, because they have more votes and more members, they jammed through every bill they want, and we never sat in that room and had a conversation about anything. Now it's almost July, and we just want to work together. They don't want to work together. They want to get what they want, and they can't do it on their own for the one thing this year. And marijuana, which they couldn't pass either, their answer to that is, well, you know what? We think the people should decide. No, because if they had the votes to pass that, they would have done that too. You mentioned trust. The governor also mentioned um, uh, how important that is to you. So Connecticut has a lockbox, there's a volatility cap, and there's a spending cap. Is there any way uh, to resolve uh, what you just described as the trust issue, to trust the state of Connecticut not to misuse the money if, uh, well, whatever it comes from, tolls or any other source? Well, let's just, I'll just give you a hypothetical, right? Let's say, in a hypothetical situation, that somebody, a legislator said, I would agree to support tolls if, in fact, you agreed to lower the income tax, okay? Just as one example. And that was written in a budget, that was written in statute. We all know that every year we can change anything we want in any part of this, in the budget, in the statutes. So that doesn't, would not give a legislator and their constituents any sense of trust or comfort that that would actually happen. So for me, that trade-off is not a real trade-off. It's not fair because we know as a legislature and as a governor, things can change on a daily basis. Where do you put the chances of even having a vote on this this, this summer? I don't know. I, I, I couldn't I mean, say. Like I don't said, know what their numbers you, actually are. Because well, he's saying understand. he has a gap with you guys, but not with the Democrats. When I asked him, well, if the Democrats are all on board, call them in. Right, right exactly. That's what so, we said too. And that's why we're in there. Because they I, don't have those. What? What else did you talk about for the uh, the other 90 minutes? Although we're all very interested in There was tolls. a lot so of repetition. No. Well, we had a, a we PowerPoint presentation. That yeah. took almost 45 oh, minutes okay. an hour. Yes. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I misunderstood you guys. Okay, so you yeah, had the power presentation, then you had a discussion. Left me a half yes. hour Senator Looney had to leave early. Yeah, yeah. And Senator that. Duff left with Senator Looney. Yeah. And then we started having dialogue of where, and we made it clear that, look, um, we made it clear that the reason why we believe we were here uh, was because you don't have the votes and you didn't include us in the, the other items that Representative Clarence mentioned. And they said, well, that doesn't matter because we're here now. And our response was very, was very simple. The most important thing, they, they think this is the most important issue we have to address in the state. And we said we would argue the most important issue that has to be addressed is the state budget which we had no input in, you had no interest in, which just passed you know, a week or two ago. And so 
It's just the disingenuousness. I believe, do I believe they want us in that room to have this conversation? Yes, but I believe they want us because they don't have the votes on their own. And it's also my understanding, Senator Fasano can, um, can answer more thoroughly on this, that the Senate Democrats don't have an interest in calling a tolls bill unless it's bipartisan. Is it your... What are you based that on? Well, I think that they don't want a partisan vote. I think that they're concerned about that. That's just what I hear. Do you agree on the sense of urgency? They no, you know, they said, what I think they might have said to you, $850 million is you being put into... Well, it's $850 million of, of uh, state money and $750 million of federal money. That's one point, help me out, $1.6 billion of infrastructure money which is more money that we've put into it prior to the, the uh, bipartisan budget. So there's more money than I think what was stated to you. Yours was more than 25%, right? That's what their question. Yours was to phase in was 100% over five months. Right, Say that again. So you wanted the bipartisan agreement had more spe money for special the transportation fund going to transportation. This slide was only 25%. Yes. Yes. I mean, what they showed here on this slide, I, I don't know if they showed our our analysis, so I don't want to speak to that. And they went so fast through these slides, it was like click, 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 it was like watching a football film. It was just really quick. You know, so I think the answer is, Susan, that it's a we all agree that it's a very important issue and something we have to address, but I don't think the issue needs to be addressed tomorrow. I think that the amount of money in it is sufficient for the time being, but it's it's a long term issue. They said that the state risks losing money in the federal match if they don't meet certain audit requirements on the, the state of those bridges. Do you think that, that they said that that's something that would be around 10 years from now, maybe a little bit farther out than that? Is that something that needs to be addressed now, or do you think just you just wait on that as well? So what it was left was that uh, we've kind of completed that to the fiscal year 2021. Yep. So it'd have to be addressed soon, yep. but relative to the fiscal year 2021, that's still two years from now, if I may. So I think it can be addressed. As long as the federal government sees what you're doing and you're moving forward, they don't want you to be stagnant and get behind. And the penalty is, essentially, they're going to earmark where your money goes. So, you know, it has to be addressed just like we believe transportation has to be addressed. The question is, how? And, you know, we've given alternative. They don't agree with it. We're going to go through their numbers they gave us. And we'll take another look. Was there any progress in this meeting at all? And did the, was the ball move forward one inch towards toll? Towards toll? Not from our perspective. Not from our perspective. Thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you.